In this exercise, we're going to learn how to use the feather tool. And in week one, you can see that there's an exercise there uh, that you'll be able to upload this assignment to. So what I'm going to do is uh, first just go out to the internet and find an image that we can use. And you can put in uh, anything in your search engine that you'd like. It doesn't really matter what image you use. So as you can see up here, I'm going to put in, say, uh, forest images. And you can download any of these. Um, you want to be careful of the file size. Uh, here, you know, any of these will work. What you want to do is find something that's got a real nice clean edge. So I'm going to click on images for forest. And I downloaded a few of these. I believe I got this one here. I uh, downloaded this one here. So anyway, any of these images here will work. You can also put in stone images. And you can use any of these as well. And by the time we're done with this exercise, uh, you'll see what we're trying to do. So you may want to watch this video in full and then come back and start it over and uh, complete the exercise. So anyway, what we've done is we've downloaded an image. So what I'm going to do now is go to File and Open. And on my desktop, I can find uh, one of these images here. So I'm just going to open up the forest image. Now, again, uh, in a previous video, you would have heard me say, you know, what are we looking at here? And currently, we're looking at 33% of the image. So on the left side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the magnifying glass and just click on the image, click on the image, and click on the image. Up here, you'll see we're now at 100%. And if I grab uh, the arrow tool here, I'm sorry, if I grab my hand, I can uh, move this around the screen. And you can see uh, what we've got here. We've got some trees on the edge, uh, grass at the bottom, leaves at the top. So this is pretty good. Uh, we're able to uh, use this image uh, in our feathering tool. So what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, click on the magnifying glass. I'm going to right click on the screen and tell it to fit to screen. Now the feather tool is a modification of this image. So all we have to do is go up to select and modify. Now you'll notice that modify is not uh, available to us, and this is for a couple different reasons. Uh, when first off, when you open up an image off the internet, it's a JPEG. Uh, it could be any type of file format, but I'm pretty sure that this file here is a JPEG. And uh, you can notice over here that this layer is locked. So I'm going to double click on the layer, and just once you double click on it, just say OK, and you'll notice that the lock goes away. If your image is locked, there's very few tools that you can use in Adobe Photoshop on this image. So we'll make sure that our image is unlocked. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and grab the masking tool. Uh, I can, I'm going to create a rectangular uh, mask. I'm going to click um, oh, about an inch inside and an inch down and come over to the other side. I want to be about an inch up from the bottom and an inch from the side. Now, again, that's just a representation of, of the working area that we're going to be working with here. So now what I'm going to do is go back up to Select, and you'll see Modify is now available to us. And here is our Feather tool. So if we click on Feather, what we're saying is, um, you know, how much of a blur and how much of an angle do we want here? So right now I'm going to leave it at 50 pixels. And when I click OK, you'll see what happens here. Okay, so we got a rounded edge, and uh, so we're going to do two different different types of feather. And uh, normally, I would do an inverse here um, on the selection because right now, what I have selected is right here. Uh, sometimes, what you want to do is get rid of the outside, but we're going to leave that. Now, in order to get the feather to work, all you have to do is hit the delete key. Okay, so you can see that I have the delete there. And I'm going to hit delete again, and delete again, and delete again. And you can see that the feather is just going out and out and out. Now, I'm not real happy with the uh, end result here because I'd like to have a little bit more uh, on my edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Control-Alt keys and then press Z several times. And you can see that's simply the undo. Control-Alt-Z is the undo. If you try to do Control-Z, Control-Z is like doing a undo, redo, undo, redo. So, Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up to Layer, 
I'm sorry, select modify feather. And notice here I have 50 pixels, um, which is okay. I'm actually going to hit cancel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new selection area. I wanna come in a little bit further than what I was before. So about an inch and a half in on both sides. And you can see I have a, a smaller window. And I can use the arrow key here and nudge this to get it uh, lined up pretty good. So, all right. Now, once you get this about an inch and a half in, an inch and a half in, all the way around, I'm gonna go up to uh, Filter, Select, go to Modify, go to Feather, choose 50 again, hit OK. And now I'm gonna hit the Delete key one time. Now you can see, I can make out there's trees. I can make out that there's grass and there's branches and leaves at the top. And that's the effect that I'm looking for, all right? Now you'll notice here that we have one layer. And we're gonna have several layers here when we're done. But what I'm gonna do now is to get rid of the selection tool, I'm gonna go up to select and deselect. All right, so now what I want you to do is to go out and uh, find another image that you want to use. So, for example, I'm going to say File, Open, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find an image, and what we can do here is just use our tigers. This is our mascot for the university, so I'm going to open up this image. Now, you'll notice um, that here we're opening up different images and you can see the two different images that we have at the top. I'm gonna to drag this image, I'm gonna left click and hold and just drag it down into here. What it'll, do, what it'll do here is it'll pull that away from the top bar and it'll give me uh, an opportunity to use it again. So I'm gonna come over to here, choose my selection tool. I'm gonna to go come over to the tiger, left click and hold. And while holding, and I'm gonna move it to this section and you can see this is a transparent section back there. I'm just going to drag and drop it on top of this image. All right. Once that's done, you can close uh, your secondary image. So make sure you go in and find some good images to work with. Uh, this image is a little bit smaller than this one, but that's okay. This is a uh, 300 DPI image, and I'm going to be able to resize it. And I'm going to resize it using the free transform tool. So if I go up uh, while I have this layer selected, notice well, now we have two layers to work with here. I'm going to make sure I'm on that layer. I'm going to do an edit and free transform. I'm going to hold the shift key because when I resize it, I want it to keep it proportionate. Okay, so I'm going to do a control alt Z. Well, actually, I'm in a command. So whenever you're in a command, you want to get out of it. Just choose your picker and don't apply. Now I'm going to do an edit free transform and I'm going to move this image up into the top left corner. Holding the shift key, I'm going to bring this image down until I'm taking up the whole screen. All right. I'm going to choose my picker up here, my selection tool, and hit apply, and that'll solidify your effects. Now, your layers here are movable. All right. So we see here that this layer is behind this layer. Whichever layer is on top is, on, is in front. What we want is the tire to be in back. So I'm going to grab layer zero and just click and hold and move it up to the top. When I do that, you can now see that the tiger is behind the tree line and it's also feathered into the image. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and bring it down. I can move this around the screen. Again, I'm on the tiger layer, so I can move this around and do it like that. Okay. Now, since we're here working in Photoshop, I'd like to go ahead and just put some text in and show you how to work with text. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the text tool here on the left side. I'm going to um, click anywhere on the screen, and you can see up here my justification is set to centered, so I'm going to click centered on the screen. I'm going to type in Salem International University. I'm going to choose my picker and that'll uh, accept my text modification there. Now you can see we really can't see that. It's uh, We can see Salem International University, but it's very uh, blurry, very small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here onto the text layer, double click on the T. You'll notice that it's selected and when you, once you double click on the T, it brings up the tools for 
that text. So I'm going to increase the font size to 72, which again, that's not big enough. So in order to get bigger than 72, I'm going to have to come up to the top and highlight and put in 150. I'm going to choose my uh, picker up here. And you'll notice that my text is dropping behind that uh, feather tool that we uh, did at first. So what I'm going to do is just put this right here. And I'm going to grab the text layer and move it above that uh, layer. And that will bring the Sailor National University to the top. OK, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the text tool again. I'm going to change its color to something more SIU. So I'm going to click in, in the center of the green. Then over here, you can see where we are. I can click anywhere and get different colors. But the closer I come down to here, and I'm trying to look at this green right here, something into a really dark green and an OK. I'm going to choose my picker again so you can see my final result. Now you'll notice that uh, there's a lot of green going on right here. So that is just a little hard to read. So I'm going to put a special effect on the text and I can do a couple. I can do an outer glow, which might be nice, or I can do a stroke effect. But in order to get to your special effects, you want to come over here and you don't want to click on the name because that'll uh, start the rename of the layer. I don't want to change the text, but I want to put special effects on the text. So over here in the blue, because blue signifies that this layer is active, just over in the corner here, I'm going to, in the blue area, I'm going to double click. And what this does is this brings up your special effects tool. Now, I can just turn these on, and if you'll watch the texture, you'll see what's going to happen. I'll click here, and it's going to put a white edge around. Now, I don't have anything here because all I did was turn it on. I need to click on Stroke in order to get to the Stroke tools. So I'm going to change the Stroke to 5, and now you can see that Salem International University stands out quite a bit. I'm going to turn the Stroke off, and I'm going to go to an Outer Glow. Now, an outer glow gives me softer edges, so it's not a hard edge all the way around. And for this image, it just actually looks a little bit better, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now, if I want to get to the uh, settings of outer glow, i got to click on outer glow. And now here, you can see I can adjust these settings. I can adjust the size to be as I need. So this is always a, a good thing to do, is to come and play with those uh, sliders there to see what the special effects are going to look like. Okay, so this finishes this exercise, and we learned several different things. Uh, first off, your special effects layers, uh, tools, there, you get to those by double-clicking on the layer, and you can see the FX here, and the effects that you applied are listed below. We learned how to use text tool, we learned how to use the feather tool, and uh, you know we learned how to drag and drop images into one another there. So anyway, what I want you to do now is to save uh, this image. And uh, all of your homework needs to be saved one way. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. So what I'm going to do is go up to the File, Save for Web. Don't do a save or save as. Now, if you want to modify this image later, you need to do a save. And then the file type here will be PSD. Now, PSD is a file that's modifiable in Photoshop. It retains its layers and all the information about the image. Okay. However, you're just going to submit this for your homework, so you can save it uh, as a PSD so that you can modify it later, but do not upload your PSDs into your homework. All right. Now what I'm going to do is do a file, save for web. I want the image to be saved as a JPEG. And you can save it as high, quality around 60. If you take this up to 100, you're going to double your file size. So you can see our image is already 2560 by 1600, so that's actually kind of quite large. Um, but I think that this image should be small enough, and which is why I use Safe for Web. So, um, you know, and again, down at the bottom, um, if we save this file now, it'll be, it'll be 719K, which is uh, plenty large enough. That's roughly half a megabyte. And I think your Blackboard uh, might have a limitation of uh, four megabytes. So we're going to be careful on these. So this is why we're going through this process. All right. So now what I'm going to do is come down to the bottom, hit Save. And it's going to ask me now, where do I want to save it? And I'm just going to drop it to the desktop. And I'm going to call this uh, Feather Tool Exercise. And Save. Okay. 
Now I'm going to minimize uh, Photoshop here, and you can see that I have uh, somewhere on my screen. Um, let's type in feather so it came over here. So you can see here's the image, and if I right click on it, I can do a preview and uh, Windows Preview will come up, and this is what the image looks like. So anyway, uh, good luck with this exercise. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.